Welcome to part two in our quest for kind of an ultimate flexible ranch rifle. We want something that can deal with all kinds of animals here on an Oklahoma ranch. Everything from varmint sized animals like prairie dogs up through coyotes, hogs, you know, kind of medium game like deer. And I think that we have kind of a perfect storm of technologies going on right now. And a lot of it centers around the cartridge. We're going to delve into that today. So let's get down to the basics of what I'm actually looking for, what I actually want to be able to do out in the field. First off, like I said, I'm dealing with everything from very small animals up through medium game. I'm not getting into elk, I'm not shooting bison or anything really heavy like that, but I do need something that's going to be able to deal with that flexible range of animals. Because in some cases, I don't know what I'm going to find out there. I may be wandering around with this one rifle and then suddenly have the opportunity to take a coyote or a hog when I wasn't expecting it. Those are the kind of animals that just kind of travel around all during the day. And yeah, you can never really tell where they're going to pop up. I also am going to have a really broad variety of terrain. So I may have really long flat areas where there's relatively nothing, just maybe a couple little scrub bushes. Uh, there may be hills, there may be valleys, there may be plains, there are going to be forest areas, and I want a rifle that's going to be able to adapt to all of those. If I want to throw down prone and be able to get very precisely on a small target, I want a cartridge that's going to be able to do that, and a rifle platform that will be able to do that. And then I also want something that will be able to deal with close-up animals that are maybe, you know, maybe I'm being rushed, or maybe I have something that's just in kind of a tighter space that's trying to get away or whatever. I want a rifle that I can very quickly point and get on target. And again, I think that we can have just this one rifle that can do it all. Today we're going to talk about that cartridge. Now, the last review that I did for a cartridge was for 243 Winchester, and I talked about how ridiculously flexible it is. This is a cartridge that you can effectively use on everything from ground squirrels up through, uh, you know, medium game. Some people have used this for elk, um, and you can kind of get into some heavier stuff, but for the most part, you want to keep it within medium game sort of uh, sizes, and that's exactly what I want. The problem with 243 Winchester, though, is that it needs a bigger rifle if it's going to be a semi-automatic platform. If you want some of the bigger mags, if you want an AR style of platform, you have to go with the AR-10. It's just too big a cartridge. It's too long. It's based on 308, so it has to be kind of a bigger platform. Now, if I want to take this down to AR-15 size like this, we do still have some pretty excellent options that maybe don't deliver quite the same punch, but they're getting awfully close, and I think they can still deal with animals in a variety of weights. There are a bunch of hard-hitting cartridges for the AR-15 platform, like 350 Legend, 450 Bushmaster, uh, 458 SOCOM, and 300 Hammer. These are going to be great for those medium size animals, like your deer or hogs. However, they don't flex down. These are ones that are not particularly easy to get on target because their trajectory really is kind of like a rainbow, and they're providing just too much energy for some of these smaller targets. We're talking about prairie dogs and coyotes. They're going to be terrible cartridges for those. Yes, you could probably make a hit with one, but it's not going to be the easiest, and it's going to be kind of a waste. So we're looking for something that's a bit more flexible on that downside. So what I've done is I've selected four cartridges, and we're going to compare themselves against each other today, and we're going to compare it all against kind of the, the daddy of all this, the 223 Remington, so we can at least see how these compare. So first off, in my chart here, I've picked out some uh, kind of important areas. Instead of just showing this arc and you get to guess, you know, which one is best, I've picked out 300 yards and 600 yards as our kind of target areas where we might actually find game and be able to make some hits. Like if we're trying to hit a coyote, 600 yards is pretty reasonable. Uh, 300 yards for prairie dogs and some of these other animals. So yeah, first off, 223 Remington, I chose, I tried to do an apples to apples comparison on all of this. So we're starting out with a, a 73 grain Hornady ELDM. I'm looking at hunting bullets here. And you can see we have a pretty good muzzle velocity. It's actually the highest of the bunch. Everything that is a positive, I have highlighted in orange. And everything that gets into a negative, I have highlighted in blue. As you look across this chart, you're going to see that that uh, 223 Remington has some pretty good orange going on, but it also has a lot of blue. This is indicating one that's not going to be a 
effective, especially as we start stepping out. The next value that I have in this chart is the recoil energy. So this one definitely has the least, but you can see that none of these really get up into super high range. Yeah, the 6.5 Grendel is almost doubling what we're getting into with the uh, the 223 Remington, but none of these are anywhere near as powerful as uh, the regular short action cartridges. Next up is the threshold. This is where we drop off 700 foot pounds of energy. So if we want to be able to have something that's a heavier hit than a 357 Magnum at the muzzle, then this is where it's going to fall off. Where do we get past that uh, 700 foot pound mark? And it's only at 325 yards with the 223 Remington. So not so great. At 300 yards, the drop is still good. Windage is looking awful. Energy is looking bad. And then everything falls off after that. So the next in the list is 22 Nosler. A bunch of you guys haven't thought about this cartridge in a good long while. Uh, there were a bunch of people trying this out originally. And I will say that it does have some downsides. Uh, 22 Nosler is able to handle some bigger bullets than uh, 223 Remington for the most part. It kind of depends. These will be ones that maybe don't have a, a kind of a very low drag setup because it has the same case length and so you can't get into some of these um, pointed VLD bullets. Kind of the same limitations you get with uh, 223 Remington. But you do get more energy. So this is still moving out pretty fast. This is an 85 grain bullet that's moving almost as fast as 223 Remington. You can see that its drop is quite good. Its energy and its windage are starting to drop off just a little bit, and its velocity is still quite good at uh, 300 yards. Once you get out to 600 yards, drop is still really good. This is still moving out pretty darn fast. Here are the ups and downs of 22 Nosler. You have a large powder charge and you're using a very flexible range of bullets. So it could be anywhere from 35 grains if you're a hand loader, all the way up to that 85 grain load that we have here from Nosler. This one is specially developed. These are their own bullets. And these are ones that you could put in 223 Remington if you wanted to. And it should be plenty for white-tailed deer as long as you were within some pretty practical distances. You'd probably better be pretty close up and you want to get that shot exactly in the right spot. This is one that is not going to be legal in a lot of states. You can't have a 22 caliber bullet for hunting. Here in Oklahoma, that's fine. We can do that. We can hunt with 22, 250, 20, uh, 224 Valkyrie. And I've heard of people around here hunting with 223 and actually having good effects with it. It just kind of depends on what bullet you choose and that you are making very sure you're putting that in the exact right spot. If you, This is not one of those that's going to be the hammer of Thor. Overall, compared to the other cartridges that we're going to look at today, this one is going to have lower energy and momentum. It's a bit of a barrel burner because, again, you're putting that kind of larger powder charge through a smaller area, and so it is going to burn up barrels pretty quickly. One thing that people found out early on with the 22 Nosler in an AR-15 platform is that it has a tendency to damage the brass. I think it was around the rim area, the head. It would bend it, and so you're going to have some limited life on your brass, and that for me is a real downside because I like to hand load myself. If you're using factory ammo, then it's not going to be so big a deal for you. Now here's where we make a sidelong step to 224 Valkyrie. It's very similar, but it has some things that make it superior to 22 Nosler, in my opinion. If I had to choose between the two, I'd go for 224 Valkyrie every day, and here is why. First off, you can get into even heavier bullets. It's set up so that the shoulder is pushed back, the neck is nice and long, and it's able to handle some longer, heavier bullets, including a 90 grain Sierra Match King bullet, which is just nuts. A 90 grain 224 diameter bullet is gonna be like a needle, and this has the best long range trajectory of all of these out here. It stays supersonic the longest, it has, you can see a whole lot of orange here in the chart. Now I've picked two different ones. I have an 88 grain load and a 90. So we have an 88 grain ELDM that's gonna be a decent hunting bullet there. It's moving out pretty fast. It's not as fast as some of these others. It's actually one of the slowest in the chart, but you can see that its recoil is still low. Its drop is not so great up close. 
And its windage is actually quite good though. It's getting up into really good territory. It's not gonna drift off very much as winds get stronger. Energy is okay. You can see it's kind of middle of the pack. And then as we get out towards 600 yards, that's when this one starts to come alive. The further out we are, it's not like it got any better, but compared to the others, it actually is hanging tight. So we have a decent drop at 600 yards. That's only 4.16 mil radians for me. I did everything in MRAD. Uh, so that's not gonna be bad at all. Pretty easy to hold off for that. And then for windage, 1.23. And it is still really cruising. It's moving out uh, well past the speed of sound at 600 yards. If we step up to the 90 grain Sierra Match King, uh, this one has, as you can see, just a whole lot of orange going through it. It starts out at 2,700 feet per second. Excellent wind drift. And especially as we get off into the 600 yard range, uh, this is gonna be supersonic for the longest time of the whole pack. And it's going to be very easy to get on target because of that low windage and low drop. However, at what distance does this one drop below that 700 foot pound mark? Remember that that's even more than a 357 Magnum, which is fine for hunting deer. So we, we have dropped below that at 550 yards. So we've almost made it out to 600 yards with enough energy to take out a whitetail. This is not the kind of hunting that I would recommend and a lot of people in the comments are probably gonna mention that. But I'm saying that you do get extended distance for taking out hogs or coyotes. Some of the other considerations with 224 Valkyrie include that if you are a hand loader, you can use that full range of bullet weights, everything from 35 grains up through that 90 grain SMK. If you have very specific uses in mind, if you want to use some 55 grain FMJs like you normally would in 223, use those for planking and for target shooting, you can load those up very cheaply. If you're a hand loader, 224 Valkyrie is a really excellent cartridge. It is, however, kind of a barrel burner. So we have that kind of larger powder charge going through a smaller area. The barrel is not gonna last as long as it will with 223. It should still have a decent life to it. But this one does have very good brass life. All the other cartridges that we're gonna talk about next get away from that, uh, that damage that we saw with 22 Nosler. They're going to have brass that lasts a good long time. This is not going to be allowed in some states just because 224 diameter bullet, they say no, they don't want any of that lighter stuff, they don't want wounded animals. Remember that you can be effective, but don't try to stretch it out too far and get into silly territory. Keep your shots kind of closer and it will work for you just fine. Uh, this is going to have a problem of momentum though, because yeah, we do have some kind of high sectional densities on some of these larger bullets, but it's not going to have a lot of the same energy that we're gonna get with some of these others where the mass kind of plows through the animal and gets you an exit on the other side. If any of you have 224 Valkyrie uh, medium game hunting experience, please put comments down below and let us know how it's gone for you. Is this a one hit drop kind of situation or is this one where you have to go hunt game afterward and try to follow a blood trail? Uh, is this one that gets an exit wound on the other side? You guys let us know. So now we're gonna step up to something that's a good bit heavier. We're looking at 6.5 Grendel down at the bottom of the chart. We have a 123 grain Hornady ELDM. This is a common size, and this is about where it's gonna be capped at about a 123, 124 uh, grain bullet somewhere in there. It has the lowest initial velocity of the bunch, but remember that we have more mass here, so we should still have plenty of energy. And actually that becomes a little bit of a problem. This does have more recoil than the others. We're not in any kind of problem territory. This is not gonna be a thumper. Your kid can shoot this. This is gonna be great. Um, but I'm just saying that of the recoil, you know, if you wanna be able to get back on target extremely quickly, this one has the most. Its energy threshold is at 625 yards. So you can actually hit harder than a 357 Magnum out past 600 yards, really cool. Its drop is not so great at some of these closer distances. Its windage is also kind of stepping up there. Its energy, however, you can see is quite good, 1193 at 300 yards. We start to get into more blue as we get into the 600 yard range. So we're starting to uh, really get into more drop. This has the most drop of any of them at 600 yards. Its windage is kind of meh, middle of the pack. Energy is still quite good, so you can make a hard hit out at that distance, like we mentioned. And this one is one of the slowest as we get to 600 yards. 
Now, aside from these figures, there are some other superlatives that we need to think about with the 6.5 Grendel. This is very popular for a lot of good reasons. Uh, first off, this is going to have excellent brass life, like I mentioned. Anything that's based on that 220 Russian case, that's going to be the 224 Valkyrie, 6mm arc, 6.5 Grendel, brass life is going to be excellent. And since we now have a larger aperture in that barrel, this is going to be much less of a barrel burner. This is going to last a good long time. And one other really cool thing to think about is that factory ammo is much more available. We actually have Wolf producing a 100 grain load for 6.5 Grendel that's very economical. It's actually uh, quite cheap. So if you want to be able to get out, do a lot of plinking, you can get that 100 grain load and it's going to work great. I think it actually uses a steel case to help with that price. You can also get into 120-ish grain bullets uh, in factory loads. And if you want to hand load, you can step down to, I think maybe as low as about an 85 grain bullet into the 90s. One of the downsides of 6.5 bullets in general is that they don't have an extremely flexible range of masses. So I think this one's gonna limit us on that kind of lower side. You can use 6.5 Grendel to shoot prairie dogs and other small animals, but I think we have some better options here, and that's why we're gonna get up to six millimeter arc now, and this one is my choice. Six millimeter arc takes a lot of what we get with 224 Valkyrie and just puts more energy behind it. So you can see that from the barrel, a 108 grain Hornady ELDM bullet is moving out at 2,700 feet per second. Its recoil is a little bit on the high side there, but you can see that its threshold for 700 foot-pounds of energy has now stepped out to 650 yards. This is the longest of the pack, and the longer these bullets fly through the air, the better 6mm arc gets. At 300 yards, we have a pretty decent drop, only 1.2 milliradians, that is fantastic, and about a half milliradian of windage if we're dealing with a 10 mile an hour wind at 300 yards. Energy is quite good, this is the second in the pack, and its velocity, it is uh, really screaming out there. Its 600 yard drop is almost up there with the 224 Valkyrie and the 22 Nosler. Windage is exactly the same as the 22 Nosler. Its energy is the highest of the bunch at 600 yards, and it takes the silver medal for velocity at 600 yards. That velocity drop and windage are gonna make it easy for me to hit a target in stronger winds at unknown distances where I just have an estimation. And if I'm dealing with a moving target, it's just gonna be a lot easier to hit it. And it's nice to know that when it arrives, when that bullet gets there, it's going to have enough energy to take out even medium game at practical distances. But that's just part of the equation. Remember that when I talked about 243 Winchester, I talked about its extreme flexibility. We can get all the way down to those 55 grain bullets up to 100, 103, 105, up to 115 grains now with six millimeter arc. And it's going to just have a kind of a higher sectional density if I'm hitting medium game. And I can get into extremely fast, uh, kind of close range hits with those 55 grain bullets. And it's nice to know that I could load up different kinds of ammo, bring them out with me, and if I need to swap a mag out real quick in order to take care of a different kind of animal, then I can do that. I could shoot this prone, I can shoot it offhand, and I can get it into a small package like this, the AR-15 instead of the AR-10. This is going to be easy to get out into the field in all kinds of positions, and I think that is what's going to make 6mm ARC the most flexible cartridge in the world. I'd like for you guys to argue with me down in the comments below. Tell me what you think is uh, the most flexible. Is it 25-06? Uh, is it one of these others? We have plenty of these that can deal with small animals up through medium, but remember that now we have opened up options, new kinds of flexibility. We can get magazines that can fit up to 26 rounds. Uh, we can fit you know, semi-automatic platforms. This is going to be something that we can just drag out anywhere and do anything with. It's easy to suppress, so I'm gonna put a can on this one. And yeah, just anything that I can do with an AR-15, I can do a six millimeter arc and be even more effective than 223. But wait, there's more. Now there is a downside. Right now we only have one manufacturer of six millimeter arc ammo, and they're only making three different types. We have a 103 grain ELDX, a 105 grain BTHP match, and a 108 grain ELDM. So we have two different kind of, there's like a target, defensive, and hunting ammo, and that is it if you can find it in your store. Actually, it seems like it's kind of available out there, you can see, but I actually have two of these from the previous CMMG test that I did. 
So we're gonna test these in the new rifle. But this is a drawback, the fact that there's only heavy ammunition and that it's only you know these three loads from this one manufacturer. I think we need to get more popularity into this cartridge. We need to get more people manufacturing this stuff. Winchester, Federal, get on it. I want some six millimeter arc ammo from you guys, and I want it in a variety of weights. And I think a bunch of other people will like this as well. But for now, since we do have excellent brass that doesn't really get damaged by the AR-15, I will be hand loading a variety of bullet weights in this series and we're gonna test these out, see how they work. It's kind of a high twist rifle, so we'll see how it does with some of these lighter bullets. I've seen others, like I think it's Gavin Tube. Uh, go check out his channel because he has done quite a bit of work with uh, six millimeter arc. I think maybe Johnny's Reloading Bench has as well. I'll put links to uh, some of their stuff down below so you can see what six millimeter arc is behaving like it seems to do really really well even with some of those lighter weight bullets but yeah uh, one of the nice things about reloading with six millimeter arc is that again we have really good brass we have a good bullet selection but we also have an excellent powder selection uh, so you'll be able to use anything kind of 223 ish everything from Varget um, accurate 2230, some of the ones from Alliant, like AR Comp, and then we have Ramshot Tack. I'm gonna be doing a bunch with Ramshot Tack. We'll see how that goes. If you have some of those ball powders, if you have some of the uh, kind of slightly uh, quicker burning extruded powders, then it's gonna work great. And sometimes you can pick just one powder for the entire range of bullet weights. It's not gonna be optimal. You may wanna pick two. So if you wanna get down into the 55 grain, 58 grain uh, sort of area, then yeah, you're gonna want something that's a little bit faster burning. And then as you uh, step up into the, the heavier ones, you get some slower burning powder, and we should get really good results from all of these. We'll see how it goes. Thanks a bunch for watching, you guys. If you have a problem with anything I said, please leave a comment down below and we can get the conversation started. But I'm really excited about six millimeter arc. When I tested it back before, yeah, the, the rifle and the ammunition didn't line up quite right, so I was only getting about two MOA out of that rifle, but I can still see the potential. I I think if I can tune my own hand loads from my rifle, I think that I'll be extremely effective out in the field, and we'll see how it goes. Thanks a bunch to patrons of the Destructive Arts for making this video possible. They have been uh, putting in you know, a buck or two, 20 bucks here and there, in order to uh, help keep these projects coming, and I'm happy to be getting back into a, a rifle build. We'll see you in the next video. Thanks for watching. If you like this video, be sure to like, share, and most importantly, subscribe. Even if you didn't like this particular content, go ahead and subscribe. There's probably something coming that's more up your alley. Check out this playlist right here. This is going to have videos in a similar vein to what you just watched. These two videos we cherry picked for you. And finally, The Social Regressive is on Patreon. So you can become a patron of the destructive arts and earn some goodies while helping us to provide high quality videos just by kicking us a few bucks a month. Thanks a bunch for your patronage.